Well, hi there. If you're watching this video, you probably already saw our video that we just made on morning geckos, and we promised you a follow-up video on how to build this enclosure. Well, this is it. Here we go. So here's everything that you should need for your build of a hatchling morning gecko enclosure. Like I said, most full-size enclosures are just not gonna be tight enough to keep those babies in. And so what I've got here is a one gallon jar. Uh, this jar lid screws on tight and that's gonna be great. In addition to this jar, and if you can find a bigger jar, a bigger jar would be even better. This was the biggest jar I could find and so one gallon it is. In addition to this, you're going to need some tools. You're gonna need a drill. Uh, a drill bit is ideal, though this is what you really, really need, which is a hole saw. Saw for cutting holes. So you'll need a hole saw. You'll need a hot glue gun and hot glue. And one of these will make your life better. If you don't have one of these or know what this is, this is a silicone pad for hot gluing and it's glorious. You'll see me use it here in a minute, but you can press it right on fresh hot glue. The heat doesn't come through it to burn you and the hot glue doesn't stick to it. So you can really press hot glue down. Amazing. Get a silicone hot glue pad. If you do any sort of crafting or DIY anything, you should have one of these. Okay, in addition to that, you're gonna need a little bit of water. That's gonna be for our moss and possibly for your eco-earth or similar substrate. I, I've got mine uh, pre-mixed, so this was, this was loose substrate. I already soaked a giant brick of it. But I am gonna soak my moss, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that in the water so it can be inflating while we're doing the other steps. My jar came with a metal lid, which you can get a hole saw that will cut right through a metal lid, but that's kind of expensive. And what I have is a lid for another jar that fits, it's the exact same size. This lid came from a jar I bought at the dollar store. So I'm gonna get rid of this lid. I'm just gonna use this plastic lid instead. In addition to that, I'm gonna need some screen and I wanna cut this screen so that it's considerably larger than my hole saw bit, but smaller than my lid. And so this screen is just perfect. I'm gonna need a stick, and this stick is kind of a lightweight, holy stick. You're probably gonna be best off if you get this stick out of your enclosure with your adult morning geckos because they're likely to lay their eggs on this, and you're probably building one of these because you have babies that'll be hatching soon, and so, Pull the sticks with eggs on them, if possible, out of your large gecko enclosure and use them as the sticks that you put in here. Last but not least, you'll need some uh, like Crested Gecko food cups. And we will have links down in the description for all of these things. So if you want to build this exact little enclosure, you can do it. I'm going to rotate my moss. Let's get to work. So. My first step, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screw this lid on. If you've got like a workbench or something, uh, that's even better. Take your drill. I'm going to use that little hole in the top and I'm just going to drill myself a pilot hole right through it. And so... There we go. Pilot hole. This is just going to make it so that when I use this, my my hole is centered. You might not be as, as OCD as I am about these things, or you might be worse. So that's a good way to do it. Then I'm gonna switch for my hole saw. If you've never used one of these before. These are actually really handy when you're putting vents or anything like that into an enclosure because they allow you to drill perfect circular holes into wood and in this case plastic. One thing I've learned, you need to apply some pressure. Don't overdo it or you could end up cracking your lid. Okay, so just go nice and slow. Okay. 
Be nice if I can get a little more speed out of this guy though. We'll see if this causes it to release. Okay, once we're through, I'm gonna need to stand up for this part because you need to put a little more pressure on. Again, don't push too hard because you'll crack it and make sure you just keep it steady. And we're done. We've now got a glorious hole. Okay. At this point, we're done with our drill. You've made a, a glorious mess. And if you have a Jason, which I strongly recommend, I probably should have said this beforehand, get a Jason, but if you don't have a Jason, uh, you'll wanna clean up your mess. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my whole mess into my jar. So I don't have pieces of plastic everywhere. And I'm gonna ask my Jason to go rinse out this jar real fast. At this point, you should have a glorious hole through your lid and your Jason should be done washing out your jar, so your jar should be free from plastic. And now, this hole uh, would allow any gecko on earth to escape from it. So, this is where you're gonna need to put the screen in. Make sure that that screen mesh is pretty fine because if it's got a, a big holes in it, then these tiny little geckos that you're trying to keep in this jar, they're still gonna get out. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lay your screen inside of your lid, so not on the outside, it'll look really goofy on the outside, but on the inside of your lid, and then you can apply hot glue on top of it. And this is going to be possible because you have this awesome silicone mat. So I'll move some stuff. Okay, bring my mat over here. And I'm just gonna tack this down. Uh, I'm gonna start with probably all four corners. I'm just gonna do a glob in each corner. And then I'm gonna push them down with my silicone mat. Once that's done, peel off any stragglers. So once I've got that on there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just tack it in more places. Eventually I need to make sure that I've made a complete circle of hot glue around this center screen. Otherwise they can potentially get under it and get out. This is gonna be the only place they can get out. It's also the only place that air can get in or out. And so you need it. At this point, you got your screen in there. And our jar is ready to go. All we've got to do now is put stuff in it. And the first thing I'm gonna put in is my little bit of Eco Earth. Put that on the bottom. I'm gonna do my best not to make a big mess with it. Just a nice thin layer of Eco Earth. Make sure I break up any big chunks. Okay. On top of that, I'm gonna put a little bit of this sphagnum moss. Probably made more than I'm even gonna need. We'll see. I'll just get a nice layer on there. And since I have more than I need, 
I'll put the rest in this plastic bag and bring it home with me, just so if I get pulled over I have a lot of explaining to do. Maybe we'll get a new subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, they'll know what that is right away. Okay, so now, one thing you could add, if you like, is a, a cutting of some pothos. I, I find that pothos does really well. It'll grow new roots from these nodes, so take the leaves off of a couple of them from the bottom, try to get those nodes down in the moss and the soil. And this, you know, these do pretty well in low light, uh, but y you will have to have this in a lighted area if you're going to use live plants. You could also use fake plants. You could potentially get away with no plants at all and just a lot of sticks. It's kind of a, a judgment call, but a happy little pothos should help make your day. Okay, let's see here. My stick's almost... Too much for this jar. I might break off just a tiny bit. All right. And that, well, that will make a pretty great little enclosure for your baby geckos. And of course, once you have geckos, you'll want to include some little food bowls. You're not going to need to fill those up, but just put a little bit of food in that food cup. I like to have one of them that I embed down into the soil, and then one of them that I stick down into it that I put the food in and I can just swap that out. And something I've noticed when I use a little enclosure like this with my babies is my babies get very used to me interacting with them and going in there and dealing with stuff, and they don't seem to be shy about my hand anymore. Uh, which is really neat. All right, now we need some geckos. As always, like and subscribe. Uh, thank you to those of you on Patreon who actually funded this project. I think it came up to not a whole lot of money, but we really, really do appreciate all that you've done for us. We hope to see you real soon. with my, oh, first thing you gotta do is make sure your bit is properly installed. I've never used this particular drill before. This one belongs to Will. It's the Will drill. And I don't know how it works at all. I've never had a drill that does this. <laughs> all right, technical difficulties.